another race, another epic finale. Didn't expect it. That's two in a row after Milan San Remo this week, and then again today at E3. And wow, I mean, we'll break it down real quick. Welcome back to the Tour Breakaway. Um, first things first, a little bit of ner- nervousness early on. We saw a crash. Narvez and Gaviria went down. Gaviria with a with a real ginger wrist. Uh, Narvez you know, quickly abandoned, and and that was going to be it for Gaviria for the day. And this is a long race, but people were already getting distance with 110 kilometers to go. Uh, we saw Casper Askreen, he had a bike change, really untimely. Um, fast forward, Quinn Simmons for Trek, he attacked with 83 kilometers to go. And it seemed a bit for naught at that point in the race. Uh, but we, with a team that strong, you just figured it was to keep the pressure off the rest of the guys um, so that they don't have to work up front. But you certainly can't go solo. Uh, in this race from that far and uh, the break ahead was already doomed it was a gripe up in that break they got about two and a half minutes but not going to be not going to be a day for them and um, to coin a quick step doing a lot of work up front and then they started to blow up the race I mean they were working real hard on the front they quickly caught Quinn Simmons with 80 to go and they were just putting people under pressure people were out the back Mads Peterson 80k he was already out the back and uh, you've got a select group already. Um, and things kind of yo-yoed for a while. We had still four Dequina Quick Step riders looking really good up front. Michael Matthews there as well. Wattman Art, of course, Matthew Vanderpool, Matteo Trentin. And holding on a little bit was, uh, was big old Alexander Kristoff. So I'd love to see that. Now, um, things got interesting. Wattman Art had a flat. He fell back out of the main group. Uh, and then with 66K to go, Casper Askren, who had a flat, already goes off the front. So what that meant for Dequina Quick Step was, well, we're not gonna work. So they just chilled. And um, they weren't really inspired to worry about uh, Wout Van Aert getting back because they had a man out front. But M- Matthew Vanderpool says, I don't wanna wait. And he launches an attack uh, to hold off that, that back set of the Peloton getting back on the select group. By the time we get down to 37 kilometers to go, it was down to 10 riders. Greg Van Avermaet, Oliver Nyson were there. Like to see that. Even Matthew Vanderpool had a teammate. So, golly geez, Casper uh, Askreen made it all the way to 12 kilometers to go, and uh, before he was finally caught. And that was a group. Yep, it was down to 10 guys that did not have Wout Van Aert in it. But of course, we had Matthew Vanderpool, uh, the Dequina Quick Step teammates, given given Askreen a pat on the back for a job well done. We still had Greg Van Avermaet in there. A couple of uh, Dequina Quick Step. Uh, riders and Van Barla actually and look they were all working because they wanted to keep the chasers away and they were motivated to do that Askreen was able to hold on to that bunch and he stuck with them in the back and then with five kilometers to go Askreen attacked and what a savage Dekoinik isn't that good you know isn't going to do anything about it and you know all eyes are on Matthew Vanderpool to pull that back because he's the wanted man and Askreen went the distance I mean, I can't think of a time when I've seen something like this. He won by 30 seconds. The rest of the guys came rolling in. He ended up finishing with 32 seconds over the bunch. And because Dequina Quickstep didn't have to work all day, Florian Seneschal came in second over Matthew Vanderpoel. Uh, and then he was followed by Oliver Nyssen and Zenik Stebar finished fifth. Uh, just absolutely incredible masterclass by Dequina Quickstep. Absolutely filthy, absolutely beast day for Casper Askreen. Greg Van Avermaet, uh, sixth. Dylan Van Barla of the Ineos Grenadiers, seventh. Pretty solid. Uh, Marcus Holgard of the Uno X Pro Cycling team was back in eighth. So great to have a top 10, but that was a minute and 28 back. That wasn't part of the select group. It ended up being seven that were that were in that final chase group uh, for the win behind Askreen. Uh, Gianni uh Vermeersch of Alpes in Phoenix, ninth at a minute 30, uh, with on his tails, Marco Holler of Bahrain, Victoria. So you had three Dequina Quick Step riders there in the top five, uh, one, two, and five. Just solid, absolute masterclass. Uh, here's what Askreen had to say. He said, I knew that after the effort I did today, that I want. Uh, wasn't going to have any chance in the last kilometer, so I had to get away and arrive alone if I wanted to win the, win the race. It was all or nothing at that point. I don't know if I surprised them, but I tried to use the traffic island to put some distance between them and myself so I could get a gap before they could react. I don't know if that made the difference. 
I think everyone had a hard day and everyone was on the limit. I felt good out there. I felt good the last week. So I was really motivated to go out there and create a hard race. That's where I have my biggest strength. I was not afraid to open up the race early. To go solo for that long was not the plan. But in the end, when you're off the front, you just have to put your head down and make the most of it. We had an amazing team here. Everyone was so strong. I could hear them cheering for me behind and I could hear how well they were bluffing the other guys. We're always... We always had someone there. It was really perfect. A huge thanks to the guys. It's really amazing teamwork. And it would not be possible to do a ride like this without my teammates, that's for sure. And look, it's pretty incredible to see him catching his breath after crossing the finish line and then Florian Seneschal rolling up being like, yeah, mate, I just got second place. So absolutely epic ride for them. And this race was so hard. Like I said, 110K to go. They were dropping riders. The guys on the front of the peloton were on the drops, pushing. It looked like, it looked like they were in the like approaching the final 10k not final 110k so really just an amazing lit up race um i mean just absolutely incredible you know when we looked at the favorites of of wout matt peterson michael matthews mateo trentin dagen kolb vanderpool of course greg van avermaet i mean, you really only had one guy there in the top 10 uh with greg van avermaet um, you know, and when you look at Casper Askreen, he was kind of like second tranche guy. Um, but look, this is how people have to beat. We've gotten to this point where Vanderpool and Van Art are so marked that they're looked at to make the move. And this is what this is what helped Jasper Stoyven win Milan San Remo, and it's without a doubt what helped uh, Askreen win today because the other guys don't are not going to attack and pull MVDP or Wout Van Aert for a win. They're just not going to do it. And so they look at them to make a move, and it creates opportunities for folks to be the beneficiary uh, you know, uh, of that nuance of the race right now and the fact that they are marked men. So good for you, Casper. I mean, just absolutely incredible and just masterclass by Decoinic Quick Step. Really, really good stuff. And like I said, this is going to tee us up for uh, Gent Wevelgem this week. And so we'll, let's talk about that. That comes on Sunday now that we've got this race um, under our belt. And Gent Wevelgem, it's the second of the four cobbled classics. Dates all the way back to 1934, only interrupted by World War II because they got this one off last year. It's a week before Flanders and a little bit different. It's a bit more one for the sprinters, partly because the classification of cobbled classic here is a bit of fake news. There's really only two kilometers of cobbles, um, and I'm gonna try to say it, but I got some I got some feedback. <laughs> I got some feedback on the YouTube. Stick to you know stick to the day job. Don't don't come out here trying to do your you know do my Duolingo courses. You know speaking in um, you know in, in my best Dutch, but the Kemmelberg and the Castleberg. Um, you know, when I tried to break down some of the some of the calls here uh, for E3, it was like, this is horrible pronunciation, and it and it is. I, I'm working on it. Um, but so there's really only two kilometers of combos uh, on on two two short climbs, and and a lot flatter. So you really do see a lot more sprint winners for Gent Wevelgem than you do for E3, um, or that you would for were Flanders now. A um, couple of stats from history. Six guys have won here three times. That includes Peter Sagan. Uh, is the only active rider to have done it three times. Uh, not surprisingly, the, the history of this race is dominated by Belgium with 49 wins. The next best is Italy with seven. Chippo has three of those. And a little bit of love for the U.S. George Hincapie won this race back in 2001. So good job, Georgie. Um, so... Let's look at the last 10 years. So the last 10 years winners, you had Boonen, Boonen, Peter Sagan, Degen Kolb, uh, Paulini, Sagan, Van Avermaet, Sagan, Kristoff, and then last year, Mads Peterson. And the, the race is not quite as good an indicator of, the, of who's going to win Flanders as E3 is. So I talked about this the other day. Um, E3 has produced seven of the last 20 winners of Flanders. They go on to win. It's it's a, a more similar type of race. Um, at E3, uh, Gent Wevelgem, two of the last 20 winners went on to win Flanders the following week. And really, it's actually only t it's it's actually tighter than that. So it's two of the last 10, if that makes any difference. Uh, Boonen in 2012 and Sagan in 2016 won um, one. 
Ghent Wevelgum, and then one Flanders. Uh, Sagan, interesting, also has the record for most podiums with six, but it's all for naught because he's not here. He's in Catalonia doing, well, not really much in Catalonia, but getting his legs under him. So um, the team support those of their big sprinters. Uh, you know, we'll see some characters that we saw that were out at E3 today. Plus, we'll see folks like Sam Bennett, Arno Demar, Pascal Ackerman, Tim Merlier. Um, oddly, no Michael Morkow for Bennett. And while uh, David Decker was, was on the start list and he was in the race today, uh, he's not on the start list, at least according to Pro Cycling Stats, for Gent Wevelgem, where I would look at him for favorite. I, I like David Decker. I, I think he's going to get a World Tour win this year. Um, so not sure why, why Morku is not there for Bennett. But look, it, the, sometimes the start lists are, are incorrect, so we'll see. Um, I was going to pick Bennett for the win, but without him, without Morku, tough to pick. But how could you bet against him at this point? So I'll go with Bennett. Um, so, yeah, so that's a quick hitter. Uh, beast day for Askreen today. Congratulations to the Dekoinik squad. And uh, it will be a fast day on Sunday where I'll break that down. Also, um, wrap up what's, what's being an amazing week in Catalonia. And then we can look ahead to, to Flanders. Ron van Vladrun. So, till then, thanks for listening to the Tour Breakaway. And uh, if you're if you haven't, and you like the show, give us a like, give us a follow, a subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. So, thanks, and we'll see you Sunday. <laughs>